Seatbelt? Check. Mirrors? Check. 3DS connected to the car to play while driving? Check. Okay, I'm ready to take my driving test. Yeah, you failed. Okay, so maybe playing 3DS while driving isn't technically legal or whatever, but at least I can drive in my 3DS in the form of racing games. First up is Asphalt 3D. Asphalt is mainly a mobile game series with some console games as well, but I remember this series fondly back on my iPod Nano 5th generation. On the 3DS, it's Asphalt with 3D, so you know it was released earlier on the 3DS when all you had to do was slap one of these on your game titles and call it a day. Asphalt was actually a launch title for the 3DS, and was actually a port of the mobile Asphalt game, and playing for a few minutes, you can tell. The game's graphics look good, but the physics are buggy. For example, if you turn a little right before you go on a ramp, you don't actually crash or anything, the game straightens you out, while your car is still turning. Reception for the release of the game was actually pretty negative, with some people saying it was the worst launch on the 3DS. Now I'm not going to be that harsh on it, but it did cost 40 bucks on release for what essentially was a sub $5 game on iOS. It's not the perfect racing game, but it does scratch the racing itch on the 3DS. And keeping in line with the 3D title, Ridge Racer 3D takes things up a notch. Uh, uh, several notches actually. It's a good game. Sorry Asphalt. First of all, look at the starting screen. Touch the engine to start? It's the little things. There's single and multiplayer modes, as well as street pass functions, such as racing against a ghost, there's a garage to customize your cars, the single player mode has a Grand Prix, as well as other modes like Time Attack and Standard Race. As for the actual game, the graphics are really good, if you prefer to play with a 3D on like me, and the gameplay is the cherry on top. I would say it's a blend of simulation and arcade racing. The game feels smooth on the tracks, and you even have nitrous tanks, so you can use one, two, or three tanks at a time. There's, uh, I guess your racing assistants helping you throughout the race, letting you know if someone is in your slipstream or whatnot. The drifting is satisfying to perform. It feels similar to Mario Kart, but not as arcadey. This game was also a launch title, and unfortunately for Asphalt 3D, it puts that game to shame. The game is well polished and adds great controls, and the maps are nice too. It might be the best non-kart racing game on the 3DS, but we'll have to look at more racing games before we can make that decision. Now we all know Mario Kart 7 is technically the best racing game on the 3DS, so I'm not going to play that game. But what about another kart racing game? Sonic All-Star Racing Transform. Now I've heard that Sonic All-Star Racing Transform is great. In fact, I remember when it came out, my cousin kept bugging me to play it, and I was like, eh. But now I see why. It's really fun, and it's not just a Mario Kart clone, as I had originally thought. Granted, yes, this is a 3DS version, because, uh, well, uh, Remember the video title? Anyways, yes, it does have poor frame rate on the 3DS compared to the other versions and some other limitations and whatnot, but I can deal with that myself. And as for the game in general, it's great. The characters are cool, you got Sonic, I, I, BD Joe, Wreck-It Ralph, the maps are really interesting, and the game mechanics are really fun. You can transform into a boat or an airplane. There's parts of the levels where you straight up fly, unlike Mario Kart over there with their falling with style of parachutes. There's also sort of a story mode with a map layout, divided into chapters where you can choose which race to partake in next, which also has a variety such as time attacks or rival races. Also there's races where you have to keep hitting the boost throughout a lap to avoid losing. The difficulty in the game is also interesting as you can choose easy, medium, or hard for any level, and you get awarded the amount of stars depending on the difficulty which you choose. Then you can use those stars to unlock different paths on the map, and also characters. The game also has a Grand Prix in a single race mode, it has multiplayer, and the whole package. But unfortunately, as I mentioned before, the 3DS port is a poor port of the game, and it even crashed my 3DS a couple of times throughout my playthrough. Yep, it's a shame because it's a really fun kart game with unique mechanics and features. But the next game on our list is also a unique racing game called 80s Overdrive. This game is a racing game that has that old school pixel sprite look, and as the name suggests, it's very 80s. The look and feel and the music, there's a career and a time attack mode as well, and there's a level editor. The way you move through the menu is really cool, the cursor is a Nintendo Power Glove. You really can't get any more 80s than that. There's an overview map where you choose your race and you get money from the races to buy more cars or tune up your existing cars. And every time you enter a race, you first have to choose the song track in this cool menu. The races are set up to be a certain length instead of laps by making the races shorter and faster, gameplay wise. Now I did want to talk about two games here when mentioning the 80s Overdrive, which yes, 80s Overdrive is a good game to check out, but I can't help but notice that maybe it was inspired by another game from the actual 80s, Outrun. 80s Overdrive could be the ultimate throwback to that game, 
and in fact the 3DS has a 3D classic version of OutRun, and it's really good. I hadn't played this game before, but once I did I was hooked. It's the original Endless Runner game, except it does have an end, but in a sense that the game is never beaten, on the original arcade your high score could have been beaten of course, and I'm sure there was battles at your local arcades in the 80s for the top score. As for the 3DS version, I got the 3D classic treatment and it looks really good on the 3DS, especially with that 3D on, and the frame rate stays smooth. And like 80s Overdrive, you choose your music before the match, and here's where the game differs. You start at the same location, and you have to race to the next checkpoint to continue playing. Then you choose a side in the fork of the road so you can choose where to go next, and you have to avoid other cars on the road as well as swerving off the road and hitting something. If you run out of time, the game is over, and you might get your name on the high score screen. Now the main appeal of the game is the vibe. It's simple, yes, but the music and the scenery and the casualness make you want to play the game over and over again. It's kind of relaxing to play, but at the same time has a lot of action going on. The 3DS version has a lot of different settings too. You can make the heads up display move as your screen moves, you can lower the difficulty, you can choose how you want to play the game. Once you do complete it, it's satisfying to beat the game in one go and rewarding. You might not be racing the other cars, but you race against yourself. If you crash, it's your fault. If you don't make a checkpoint, it's all on you. It's not the most advanced 3DS racing game, but it sure is addicting. Well, there you have it. A few racing games on the 3DS. And yes, there's plenty more racing games on the 3DS, but I just wanted to showcase a few of them from different genres. Arcade, kart racing, or old school racing games. The 3DS isn't the first system you think of when wanting to play racing games, but there's still fun titles on it, and you can always play anywhere on the go. Isn't that right, DMV Drive Tester employee? You failed. Well, but I'm not even in a car. Failed. Duh.